सो पेपर कोड Q6 क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स द रेशो ऑफ रेडियस ऑफ कायरेशन ऑफ अ थिन यूनिफॉर्म डिस्क अबाउट एन एक्सेस पासिंग थ्रू इट्स सेंटर एंड नॉर्मल टू इट्स प्लेन टू द रेडियस ऑफ गायरेशन ऑफ द डिस्क अबाउट इट्स डायमीटर इज फर्स्ट वी शूड राइट वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया फॉर दीज टू मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया वेन एक्सेस इज पासिंग थ्रू सेंटर ऑफ द डिस्क बट पर पेंडिकुलर टू इट्स प्लेन इज एम आर स्क्वायर बाय टू but moment of inertia when axis is along diameter of the disk is mr square by 4 now what is the value of radius of gyration if we denote radius of gyration by k then k is given by root of moment of inertia divided by mass in this case because we are talking about the same disk obviously the mass is same so k1 by k2 if i write this as k1 it should be i1 and k2 should be root of i2 divided by m so the ratio of two if we divide these two equations will give us k1 by k2 equals to under root of i1 by i2 now the ratio of these two i1 by i2 is going to be 2 so this is simply root 2 is to 1 hence second option should be correct we should move on to the next question now question number 7 the angular speed of a flywheel moving with uniform angular acceleration changes from 1200 rpm to 3120 3120 rpm in 16 seconds The angular acceleration in radian per second square is. If angular acceleration is uniform, we can simply say alpha is delta omega divided by delta t. But what will be the value of delta omega? That will be three one two zero minus twelve hundred. But this value is in rotations per minute, and to convert RPM into radian per second, we should multiply this. With two pi divided by sixty, so this is the value of delta omega in radian per second, and then we will uh, divide this by the value of time interval in which this change is taking place. So this is going to be one nine two zero divided by sixteen multiplied with two pi over sixty. So this will give us four pi, which should be the answer to this problem in radian per second square so second option should be the correct option we should move on to the next question an ideal gas undergoes four different processes from the same initial state as shown in the figure these processes are adiabatic isothermal isobaric and isochoric the curve which represents adiabatic process among these four is we should first see that this process 4 is definitely isobaric this process 1 is definitely isochoric because vol uh, volume is constant but among these two processes we should decide which one is adiabatic obviously adiabatic process has got much more steeper curve much more steeper steeper slope as compared to isothermal process so slope for isothermal process is given by simply minus p over v while that for adiabatic process is given by minus gamma times p by v that's why slope of adiabatic process is much more steeper hence the process 2 must represents adiabatic process so second option should be the correct answer next question two hollow conducting spheres of radii r1 and r2 r1 is much much greater than r2 have equal charges the potential would be if we are talking about a conducting hollow sphere then potential of such an sphere is given by kq where q is charge on the sphere divided by its radius r which means potential is directly proportional to 1 by r 
it directly means that the bigger sphere will have lesser potential for same charge. And the question is asking us that if two conducting spheres are there, then the potential would be more on bigger sphere? No, because bigger sphere will have lesser potential, more on a smaller sphere. So this should be the correct option. Next question. When light propagates through a material medium of relative permittivity epsilon r and relative permeability epsilon mu r, the velocity of light v is given by. Of course, if we write c in terms of permittivity and permeability, then it is given by c equals to mu naught multiplied with epsilon naught. But if we calculate speed of light in a particular medium, then it is given by 1 over root of mu for the medium multiplied with epsilon for the medium. And if we divide these two, then the ratio V by C is going to be 1 over root of relative permittivity and relative permeability. So V should be given as C divided by root of epsilon r mu r. Hence, option 4 should be the correct answer to this problem.